At this hour, I'm Christina Ohio in Dallas, and here are your top stories. Senator John Thune has won the secret election conducted by Senate Republicans to become the upper chamber's next majority leader. Thune is now a key partner on Capitol Hill to President Donald Trump. However, many online are voicing their concerns over this election, still insisting Rick Scott should have been chosen, but hoping the Republican from South Dakota will prove everyone wrong. And he's off to a good start. Thune has reportedly already jumped on a phone call with Trump, then said he's excited to get to work implementing the president's agenda. We will do everything we can to process his noms quickly, uh, get them installed in their position so they can begin to implement his agenda. We expect a level of cooperation from the Democrats. President Donald Trump has chosen Tulsi Gabbard, a former Democrat member of Congress and presidential candidate to serve as the director of national intelligence as he continues to stock his cabinet with loyal personalities who come with years of professional experience in their fields. In a statement, Trump said, I know Tulsi will bring the fearless spirit that has defined her illustrious career to our intelligence community. Fighting for our constitutional rights and securing peace through strength, Tulsi will make us all proud. Trump also appointed Marco Rubio for Secretary of State, saying he will be a strong advocate for our nation, a true friend to our allies, and a fearless warrior who will never back down to our adversaries. I look forward to working with Marco to make America and the world safe and great again. President Donald Trump arrived back in Washington, D.C. and was greeted with a standing ovation by House Republicans as he took the stage at the GOP conference's meeting near the Capitol. The 47th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Well, thank you very much. This is a very nice gathering. Isn't it nice to win? It's nice to win. It's always nice to win. Trump was back at Joint Base Andrews for the first time since leaving office back in 2021. With him, of course, was Elon Musk, who sat in the audience and listened as Trump spoke to the conference. Trump, who is being celebrated as the comeback king, jokingly told lawmakers, quote, I suspect I won't be running again unless you do something else. Unless you say he's so good, we've got to figure something out. Joe Biden and Donald Trump met Wednesday in a historic Oval Office meeting where the two talked about engaging in a smooth transition with Biden telling Trump he will do everything they can to make sure he's accommodated. Thank you, Donald. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to having a, like we said, smooth transition. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So good. Welcome. Welcome Thank back. you. And, uh, thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough, and it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate it very much. And a transition that's so smooth, it'll be as smooth as it can get, and uh, I very much appreciate that. Migrants continue to march towards the United States, even though the caravans are breaking apart according to recent reports. Some migrants are trying to make it to the southern border before President Donald Trump takes office, hoping to get lost in the country for years before having to attend an immigration hearing. However, the caravans numbering in the thousands have started to break apart as some are realizing they will most likely be deported as soon as Trump is in the White House. In fact, one of the caravans traveling through Mexico was cut down by half. Trump has promised mass deportations to deal with the estimated 20 million illegal migrants that have come into the country since the start of the Biden-Harris administration. A man who worked for the U.S. government has been charged with leaking classified information assessing Israel's earlier plans to attack Iran. That's according to court papers filed. The man, identified as Asif William Rahman, was arrested by the FBI this week in Cambodia and was set to make his first court appearance in Guam. It's not immediately clear which federal agency employed him. The documents noted that Israel was still moving military assets in place to conduct a military strike in response to Iran's blistering ballistic missile attack on October 1st. Israel carried out a retaliatory attack on multiple sites in Iran in late October. President Donald Trump's election win is bringing in a new outlook for mortgage rates even before he gets back to the White House. The president campaigned on a promise to make home ownership more affordable by lowering mortgage rates through policies aimed at knocking out inflation. Trump has said the first step in bringing inflation down from the historic highs the nation experienced during the Biden-Harris administration is through energy, campaigning on his popular phrase, drill, baby, drill. Experts believe that Trump's policies will have a major impact in turning the economy around and making life more affordable for American citizens. Inflation in the United States was back on the rise 
rise in October driven by surging prices for rent, used cars, and airline tickets. Consumer prices rose 2.6% from a year earlier and up from 2.4% in September. It was the first increase in annual inflation in seven months. However, because inflation is cumulative, prices across the board are still 20% higher than when Biden took office. Costs are just rising at a slower pace than they did when the country saw record high inflation rates. From September to October, prices edged up 0.2%. An uptick in prices, if sustained, might make the Federal Reserve less likely to cut its key interest rate in the coming months. Canada's Labour Minister Stephen McKinnon says he is intervening to end lockouts at the country's two biggest ports after the negotiations reached an impasse. He said he's directing the Canada Industrial Relations Board to order the resumption of all operations at the ports of Vancouver and Montreal and move the talks to binding arbitration. Port of Montreal's workers were locked out Sunday and workers in Vancouver have been locked out since November 4th. McKinnon says there is a limit to the economic self-destruction that Canadians will accept. That's what you need to know at this hour. In Dallas, Christina Ohio, Salem News Channel.